takes me a while, sorry. Uh, we refer to Charles or C.C. Reed as Charlie. And today I'm very proud and uh, honored <laughs> Uh, that his son and his uh, wife, uh, his son, Charles, and his wife, Regina, and his son, CJ, are with us here today. Uh, Dr. Denton Cooley hired Charlie in 1971 to become our new Chief of Perfusion Technology here at Texas Heart Institute. He also uh, hired Charlie to become the first Perfusion Program Director here at the Texas Heart Institute, and that was in December 1971. Our first class started in January 72. The first class graduated in June of 72. That means we were a six month training program. Uh, shortly after that, uh, Charlie published, or he authored three textbooks, Cardiopulmonary Perfusion, Cardiopulmonary Bypass, and Safety and Techniques in Perfusion Technology. I'm sorry, I may have gotten that text name wrong, but basically safety. He was a huge advocate of safety and he demanded it of everybody around him. <clears throat> he, uh, together, Dr. Cooley and, and Charlie wanted to uh, develop the school so that we could have well-trained perfusion technologists that would support the Texas Heart Institute, but also the rest of the world. And I think we've done a very good job on that, as I mentioned yesterday, in the number of countries that we're working in around the world, and also here in the United States. I think 49 of the 50 states, perhaps, and a few other countries. And so we've done pretty well in that regards. The, uh, let's see, what else we have here? Charlie was a unique individual. He accomplished a lot of things in the short amount of time that he was at work. <laughs> uh, he, was, he was one of the ones that first authored or started writing in regards to standards and guidelines for our perfusion uh, uh, schools and other places. He was also a past president of the AMSEC organization, that's the American Society of Extracorporeal Technology. He also founded the American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion and uh, starting the certification process. He was a huge advocate on certification. And the same thing for uh, accreditation of perfusion schools. And because he was the president of the American Board at that particular time and, um, and the conversion over to the Accreditation Committee on Perfusion Education and KHAL, uh, we happened to have our school signed off as the first accredited school in that, in that particular time period. And uh, he was also original founder and a member of the American Academy of Cardiovascular Perfusion. And I think I may have a slide of that here in a moment. No, it's no, no, go back there. Yeah. Yeah, go back. I'll find it in a minute. <laughs> He worked uh, on those things to help improve our perfusion society and make it a, a very strong society. And he did expect a lot from us. Um, he, um, he expected the best in perfusion technologists. He expected the best in perfusion students. And he also expected the best in, the, in our vendors that provided us with supplies. Hence the reason he basically forced them into cleaning up their oxygenators, reducing uh, particulate matters in the oxygenators. Uh, reducing the percentage of water and blood leaks from whatever amount that the companies wanted to do back in those days to zero. That was his expectations. If you did not meet Charlie's expectations, you would know it. And it was typically by the tone of his voice that a few of us uh, <clears throat> encountered. Charlie had many hobbies. Uh, I gave him a fish tank one year. And no big deal, a small fish tank. And the next time I saw him about a month later at his house, an entire bedroom was full of fish tanks, salt water, uh, you know, fresh water and et cetera. Uh, he had a room with Betamax, I think is what it was called. Yeah, Betamax and VCRs that were programmed to uh, tape these uh, things like John Wayne movies and et cetera. And again, an entire bedroom. He was a photographer. He converted one of his bedrooms to a dark room so he could do his own um, pictures, that develop his own pictures. He was an avid hunter. Uh, when we'd go goose hunting or duck hunting, he would make bag his limit in a short period of time. It might take me half a day or an all day to maybe get one duck or one goose. Uh, the other interesting thing about Charlie, he was always creating things like many perfusions do. He had to save hundreds of white plastic drapes that came off the outside of our custom tubing packs. I asked him, what for? And he said, 
for goose decoys. And they turned out to be great goose decoys because we can just, they're lightweight, they were small, we put them on the rice stole and put them out there and pick them up and they were plastic, so they, no big deal if they got wet. And so that was quite a unique individual there. We didn't have to put out the real decoys and they worked wonderful. He was a collector uh, of paintings, carvings, and a wide variety of items. He's very eclectic. And he also collected orchids. I went down to Panama with him one year. We spent about a week down there, got lost in the jungles for a couple of hours, hacked our ways out uh, of the jungles, and uh, so we survived. And then right after that, we went over to uh, Maruja's house. She was one of our graduates from uh, Texas Art Institute, uh, only to find out she wasn't there, but that didn't stop Charlie. We went on a shopping spree, just like he always does whenever he goes anywhere, he goes on a shopping spree to buy something from that country or from that region. Another trip was in Paris. And, and by the way, no matter where we went, we were always talking about perfusion technology, just like we do when we go to wherever. Uh, if we see one another on the street or we see somebody else's home and things, we seem to talk about perfusion technology all the time. Drives my wife crazy sometimes. Uh, but anyway, that's what we do. Anyway, at this particular juncture in my life, we were in Paris and that's Tally Hill. Tally was a perfusionist from Canada and across from them was uh, Charlie's wife and also uh, Aaron Hill, and they were there for a meeting. But after the meeting was over with, Charlie went shopping. He, again, for paintings and for art and for China and a wide variety of things. Crystal, he just, he had it all. Let's see here. Okay, so what do I do to make it move forward? Oh, there we go, there we go. <laughs> it says right here. Um, also while in China, in, uh, our, the company I was working with at that particular time, we were over there with having equipment and supplies and donated a lot of things for China. But China, we were also over there in Shanghai and Beijing. And during that time period, we did a considerable number of adult patients and a few pediatric patients while we were over there. And of course, educational exchanges, giving them books and et cetera. So Charlie was instrumental in doing a lot of those things. But again, when the day was done, he was shopping. Uh, for whatever he shopped for, jade, china, whatever. I never saw a lot of those things that he bought, but I knew he bought a lot of things when he went out like this. And so there was always an educational opportunity and there was always a shopping spree to follow. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Charlie was a, a member and a past president of the American Academy of Cardiovascular Perfusion. But some of our other people that are here today and that have passed or whatever were also members of the American Academy also. There was Diane Clark there and Chris Clay and uh, Jane Smith and uh, let's see who else I can see. Bill King, Richard Berryessa, myself. There was a handful of us that were members at that particular time. It kind of grew over the years. Uh, then as far as the perfusion team goes, that particular year, I think I was about the only one. Oh, Bill King's there. So the two of us are here today over there on the near the far right there. And the rest of them are spread out all over the country. <laughs> Uh, another group of perfusionists there. Uh, Chris and I are there on the far right. Chris is here today. Oh, I want to go back on that one. Uh, Craig Wilsek is over there on the far left at the top. Uh, and Craig was uh, presenting yesterday. I think that was a really enjoyable. I really liked that lecture. Uh, that's us. And Chris Clay is here today and she's down there. Uh, let's see if anybody else is here today. No, I think so. And then Charlie retired in, I believe it was 1985, as I recall. He moved to Pickles Gap, Arkansas. He bought some land, built a house, got a farm, got a ranch there, had some animals, selling tomatoes on the side of the road and those kinds of things. And um, he, he had a great display for all of these items he had collected all over the world. Uh, he had a um, uh, you know, big shop, still places for his VCRs and tapes and things like that uh, that he could watch. And... Uh, he, uh, he passed away at a very young age of 54 years old. In 14 years, he basically accomplished more than all of us together could accomplish in this room. And uh, basically built the foundation of which we could uh, work upon here and now in the, in the future. And um, so I was very proud of having that opportunity to work with him and being part of Texas Heart Institute. 
And uh, Deb, would you like to come up? I, I, I'm just really privileged and humbled to be a part of this. Um, I think, um, like I said earlier, Charlie was my program director um, when I went through perfusion school and um, he was hard on us. He definitely was, but he was a very um, uh, complex, multifaceted man. Uh, he loved poetry. He wrote poetry. Um, he was always kind to me, and I, I was always made me kind of nervous. I was like, "Am I getting ready to get fired?" <laughs> it was a sign. But you knew um, he pushed you to your limits and um because the patients deserve that patients deserve for us to be the best that we can be every single time and as teachers our students deserve that and i learned that from charlie and terry and raymond and so um anyway, just thank you for you know letting me be a part of this moment thanks Charles, could you come up here for a moment? <laughs> One of the things that was done for Charlie was they had a bronze bust made of Charlie and I wanted to make sure that it got to the appropriate person. And uh, Charles and I had dinner last night. We talked about um, <laughs> a lot of history. <laughs> uh, Terry and Deb, you know, thank you so much. Um, I met my dad very late in life, I was 16. I actually had come up to the Texas Heart Institute probably in like 1983, 1984. And he got, Trudy took me back into the operating room. And, um, you know, a couple of things I remember back then, Charlie pointed out Dr. Cooley's Rolls Royce, which is like this metallic pink color. I thought that's pretty cool. In the operating room, I, he said, yeah, they, Trudy said, oh, you make sure you stand over here. And I was amazed. I mean, they had pulled out all the intestines of this person and they were working back towards the spine and replacing some vessels. Um, and what I remember was, I was amazed that when they were the, someone was like sort of leaning on the, the organs of the patient, the sterile towels were on top of it. And when they put everything back, it just like all fell back into place. And so I was 16 years old. And I thought, that was amazing. Everything just goes back into the body and stuff. And it really wasn't until after Charles had passed away that I really learned how much he had done for the profession and how committed he was to profession. But, so I knew him for five and a half years. Um, and, but when he passed, I thought that was sort of it. So I already thought my knowledge of Charlie was going to end with my interactions with him for those brief years. Um, but years later, I, I came across the Academy website and actually saw the, or read the memorial lectures. And they were very insightful. Aaron Hill had written one. Um, um, another gentleman out of Georgia had written one. Um, and I thought it really gave, it gave some insight and things that I didn't really know about Charlie. But what I do remember is one of the times I'd gone up to his house, I was amazed at his capacity. Here he was working on a novel, an aviation novel he was writing. He, was, he had five TVs on and he's talking about Zulu wars in Africa and he's smoking his cigarettes and drinking iced tea. And I was amazed that he could just do, he could just take all this in about what great capacity. And if I could only have a fraction of his capacity for, for, for what he had done. So, you know, you can read those things online. And once again, it, it sort of fills that void of things you didn't know about them. But the difference he, now is that having someone speak the words, right? I can read the words about him, but having you all share your stories with me, it's been incredible. And something I will never forget. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>